Hello, welcome to the first video in the Free.js crash course. So, what is Free.js? Well, Free.js is a lightweight 3D library created by somebody called Mr. Doob. That's just his handler that he goes by online. His real name is R Ricardo Cabello. It's an amazing library that allows you to use WebGL constructs without actually having to really write any WebGL code. Anyone that's used WebGL or OpenGL or, or OpenGL ES for that matter, you'll know it's such a pain just to get simple stuff working. Unless let's say you're creating let's say a whole new game engine or out of curiosity you want to learn it, chances are you'll use maybe either a game engine or a lightweight 3D library like free.js which allows you to access those constructs. You're still coding so you have a lot of flexibility so you can do a lot with it but it abstracts a lot of it out and you're just writing simple lines of code to basically do simple tasks. In this video we're not going to do much beyond setting up. It'll be a good foundation for moving forward in this series. First of all Make sure you have free.js downloaded. Just go to freejs.org, click download right here, or you can just go to GitHub because it's open source as well. Just go to GitHub, you can see the different releases and it gives you some more information about it. I've already got it downloaded because it's like 140 meg. So let's just show you some examples of what free what free.js is capable of. It's capable of some really cool stuff. So let's just check these out. So all of this is done using free.js and the beauty of it is it doesn't require any plugins, it's run in the web browser. There is some compatibility issues with free.js. If you just type in free.js compatibility, we can have a look at do what website should we use? Let's have a look at free.js browser compatibility. Should get like a nice little graph. Check the browser compatibility here. Basically, can your browser or the user's browser use WebGL? Chrome for a while has been supported. Internet Explorer, it's from the new version. Edge is supported, Safari, Firefox and Opera have partial support, but generally speaking, chances are your users should be able to access it. And even if they can't, if they really want to, they could download something like Chrome. And Chrome isn't a bad browser. Best browser out there, in my opinion. So, and it's got a huge market share. So that's just a brief overview of what free.js yeah, so here's like another example. So I could change the gender, change the hair, let's change this up a bit. So like I said, this is all done in free.js, no plugins, and you're running it in the browser. And free.js, or WebGL more specifically, is compatible on mobile devices, aka in the browser as well. So that's really cool. So this is just loading. Taking a little while to load, but this is actually pretty darn cool. It's just Earth. So let's actually get on to setting up our project. So once you've got this downloaded, you'll get a zip file. You just want to extract that out. And in here, all we're interested in is the free.js file. You can either use the minified version or the regular version. I'm, I'm going to put both of them in the JavaScript folder that we're going to create in our project folder in a moment, but I'm just going to be including the free.js. When you're putting it online, you'll most likely want to include the free.min.js because I find with the non-minified version, you can do stuff like IntelliSense. I find this you generally can't with the minified version and minified versions load faster so that's what you want to be pushing to your users on the net so what we're going to do is create a new folder i'm going to call this free js crash course and in here i'm going to create a new folder called js and our javascript files are going to go into here so let's copy and paste this into here like so Create a new folder. Actually, we don't need a 
a folder for images or anything like that yet because we're not really going to be dealing with that here what we're going to do is just open up this folder in a text editor i'm using atom but you can use whatever your favorite text editor is whatever your favorite ide is open go to desktop free js crash course open now inside here i'm going to create a new file index.html and now we can start setting up our project so to do this just do some simple html tags obviously some prerequisites didn't mention this for doing this series you should know javascript pretty well it'll help if you know html and css because you'll be using that because it's on the web you'll be doing a bit of web development with it and if you have some server side knowledge like php that will assist you in your free.js programming journey but it's not crucial so html let's do some head tags now let's just do a title and the website we're going to call it free.js crash course we're going to do some styling here generally speaking you'll probably want to abstract the styling out and the javascript out but because it's a crash course we're just going to keep it all in one file keep it simple we're going to do body margin zero this is just to make sure that our canvas covers the entire browser now we're going to put canvas the width we're going to set to 100 percent the height i think you guessed it 100 percent again And now we're ready to start doing our body tags. In here, first of all, we need to include the JavaScript file for FreeJS. So let's just do that. Source equals JS for slash free dot JS. And now we can actually start setting up our FreeJS world. So script var scene equals new free dot scene. So a scene is just what you'll be viewing, what you'll have objects in, what the user will be interacting within. We need a camera, so this is sort of a virtual camera. This is what the user will see the world through. Equals to new free dot perspective camera. You can either have a perspective camera or an orthographic camera. Differences are perspective allow you to have depth, aka if you have an object further away, it will look smaller, and if you have an object nearer to the camera, it will look bigger as objects do in the real world orthographic on the other hand don't do doesn't do that so if there's an object further away or closer to you it won't look any bigger or smaller assuming let's say it's the same object of the same so you might be thinking why would you ever want to do that for stuff like 2d games 2.5d games architecture where you where measurements are crucial so there are use cases for that but we're going to be dealing with perspective camera but because this is a crash course we're not going to cover every feature Luckily, FreeJS has great examples and great documentation. So if you go into documentation, you, so you can just click on orthographic camera. It gives you a lot of information, how to set it up. And there's information about all of the different little features within FreeJS. So we definitely recommend that you check that out. So perspective camera. This will take a few parameters. This will be the field of view first, so I'm going to put 75 degrees, so this is just basically how much you're seeing, pretty simple stuff. Now we just need to give it a ratio of our browser, so to do that, really simple, you do window.inner width 
divide by window dot inner height and now you need to specify the near clipping plane I'm going to put 0 0.1 and now the far clipping plane I'm going to put 1000 so just a brief overview of the near clipping plane and the far clipping plane are let's just give you an image near clipping plane and far clipping plane it's just re it's sort of region for rendering or what you can see so we got this little diagram right here so we've got the near clipping plane anything before the near clipping plane you won't be able to see anything beyond the far clipping plane you won't be able to see because generally speaking if the object's too far away you don't want to be able to see it you don't want to be doing as much rendering if you generally don't need to so that's what the far clipping plane and the near clipping plane are the field of view is just how much you can see the bigger the field of view the more you can see and the width and the height was used to calculate the ratio of our browser. So let's just go back. So we've got the camera all set up. We need to set up a renderer. So var renderer equals new free dot web gl renderer renderer dot set size we'll set it to obviously window dot inner width window dot inner height and now we can do document dot body dot append child and we're gonna simply add the renderer dot dom element and now what we're gonna do is set up an update method so var update equals function and the update method will just be called every frame and anything that you're checking like so if you're moving a character if you're checking if something's happened you'll handle within this method right here I'm not going to put actually anything inside here for this tutorial so I'm going to put game logic now we're going to have another method called render equals function and in render you put basically everything that you want to be drawing so renderer dot render so we need to specify the scene and the camera that the user will be viewing the scene through at the moment these aren't called at all so we're going to do var game loop equals function oops daisy game loop is a game development theory a construct which just specifies how the game will be flowing so you'll be doing update you'll be checking the update then you'll be processing it then you rendering it that sort of stuff if you're not too familiar with game loops i would recommend just have a quick google of it read up about it won't take too long and then come back so game loop no parameters at all i'm just gonna put some more comments so i'm put draw scene nah, that's fine doesn't really matter whether it's capitalized or not run game loop so update render repeat and in here we do request animation frame game loop this just allows us to run it every single frame and now in here we're just going to do update so we're going to call the update method first so handle any updates and then call the render method so this renders the scene through the camera now finally we just need to run our game loop at least once this is actually all ready to run now so if i just save that minimize this double click on this 
make sure there's no errors in the console doesn't look like it and it's working though we've got it set up before we end this video just want to show you something else we don't recommend or well mr do doesn't recommend it either that you run your project locally by just double clicking it and opening it in a browser like we just did simply because of the same origin policy which is a security feature built into javascript that prevents loading of external resources external resources that we will be using throughout this series is textures models that sort of stuff so what you want to do you can either disable same origin policy on your browser don't recommend doing that because that can cause security issues the other two methods that we would recommend are either set up your own local server which we'll show you in a second or if you have access to an online server put it on there but for local development what we're going to do is just show you how to set up a local server so if you just open up something like terminal if you're on another machine like a windows machine recommend installing something like wamp which is just a windows apache mysql server or xamp which is a cross-platform apache mysql server install this run your project within here and you'll be good to go when you come to loading external files so if you're on a mac what we recommend is cd into your project directory and then just running this command php s you can run a python server if you want it doesn't really matter we just prefer running php dot zero dot zero dot one colon eighty eighty obviously if that port isn't free then, then just use a different port and now we can still access it like this but the new way to access it would be 127.0.0.1 colon 8080 and now it has loaded our project so that's it for setting up free.js if you have any questions feel free to ask us and as usual thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day